Welcome to Coffee Talk with Liquid Shano 1973, an inspirational podcast about the ups and downs of life and everything in between. Here's your host, Shane Lakita. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Coffee Talk with Liquid Shano 1973. As you know, I'm your host, Shane Lakita, and I'm here to move things forward with you, to be able to achieve our goals and do everything we can to be the best version of ourselves. So here I am with you, side by side, hand in hand. We're doing this together. We're making things happen, and we're doing everything we can to be the best version of ourselves. So welcome aboard, everybody. I know that over this last week or two, I've had a lot of new people pop into my lives, on my Instagram, on my TikTok feed, and everything else. And they've all been able to just stop in there to say that they're listening to the podcast now. So a lot of people listening to all these different platforms, everything from iHeartRadio to Spotify to Soundcatch, SoundCloud, iTunes, all kinds of different things that we have people listening to it on. So whatever platform that you're listening to it on, I appreciate you so much. And overall, it's humbling to know that so many different places that people can listen to it in so many different ways. So thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of my journey and a part of this whole entire this whole entire thing that we're doing together. So uh, there's something I wanted to talk to you today about. Okay, well, well, actually, first of all, let's talk about that for a second. Okay, so social media, and we'll talk about all the different platforms that the podcast is on. So in general, you can find me on any of the platforms. Okay, so if you're listening to it right now, you know exactly where you found me. But if you want to share it with people, you want to be able to talk about different places for people to go to to get to the podcast, they can go to any of the platforms and type in the title of the podcast itself. So Coffee Talk with Liquid Chano 1973, and it'll come up on any of the platforms. And then once you get in there, you can subscribe. Now, on top of that, what I'm really looking for is I'm looking for anybody that wants to be out there that can actually leave some feedback on any of the platforms that are there, more specifically the iTunes and the Apple Music platform. The reason I ask that is because a lot of people, they go to skim through and look through all the different types of podcasts and everything else, and if they roll across it, they can see a review of something that they may be looking for. So if you left something like, you know, inspirational or something that he helps me through my day or whatever, whatever it is that you're leaving on there that you can get from this podcast, because you guys tell me all the time on how much you love the podcast by doing that. It can actually attract more people, and they can actually look at that and say, well, let me go check this guy out. Let me go see exactly what he stands for and what he's all about. So do me a favor and do that. And on all the social media platforms, as you guys know, I am at Liquid Shano 1973, except for TikTok, of course. I am at Liquid Shano, okay? No 1973 on that one. So come visit me. Come follow me. Come check me out, and we'll, uh, we'll keep growing this whole thing together, okay? All right, so today I had a thought. This morning when I woke up, I thought to myself, you know, I work hard. I've worked hard for the last 15 years with the same company. I work hard every day. Uh, My wife works hard. We grind it out. Now, I know that everybody on this podcast right now that's listening to me probably can relate in some form or fashion to think to themselves, we all bust our asses doing the things that we have to do to try to get things done, right? You're grinding it out. You work your 12-hour day or whatever, whatever your schedule looks like, your 40, 50, or 60-hour week. You got kids at home, you're grinding it out, you're doing everything you can to put food on the table, to continue to push forward. You just do it because it's the right thing to do, right? Whether it's family, whether it's yourself, whatever it is, across the board. We don't even ask questions. We literally just go and do it because it needs to get done, right? I mean, all of us are in those same shoes. You have a job to do, we go do the job. You have something you need to be able to accomplish. We just have to go and do that accomplishment because one, we, we, we're going to collect the paycheck from it. Or two, we need to support and defend and do everything we need to do for our family and our friends and everything around us. So we don't even bat an eyelash at the fact of some of us are working 60, 70 hours a week, right? You might be traveling 400 miles a week. You might be going all kinds of different places and doing all kinds of different things. And you're trying to work and trying to grind and you just do it all the time. And you don't ask questions and you just do it. You just go down the road of getting it done and making it happen. Now that's fine, right? I mean, that's the American way. If you work hard, you can get things. If you work hard, you can then maybe reap some of the some of the benefits of the work that you're doing, maybe go on vacations, maybe hang out with the family, maybe have some of the luxurious items you want to be able to fight for. Maybe you want to be able to, I don't know, own a nice car, 
Maybe you want to own nice stereos or whatever else, whatever it is, right? You're trying to afford yourself the ability to be able to do the things that you want to do overall just by grinding and working and doing everything you have to do to get there. Right. Like I said, it's the American way, isn't it? So how many of you are in those shoes? If you can raise your hand right now and say to yourself, I bust my ass every day to be able to try to get the things that I need to get to. Now, this thing you're trying to get to could be anything, right? It could be anything. This thing you're trying to be able to accomplish could be anything from weight loss, could be anything from professional goals, personal goals, weight loss, fitness, whatever it is that you're trying to be able to accomplish, and you bust it. Like, seriously, you're grinding. You're, you're, you're doing everything you can to be able to, to, to get to this goal and fight to be able to afford it and be able to move things forward and be able to be in a good place. Because it's what you think needs to get done, right? Now, this podcast isn't about those expectations. This podcast is quite the opposite, actually. This podcast is taking a look at whatever it is you want to accomplish, and this is going to be able to help you get there by making sure that you're focusing and leaning in on something that we call self-care. Something that we call leaning in and giving yourself some self-love. How often is it that you work your tail off? You get up, you grind, you wake up first thing, you look at your goals, you look at what your schedule looks like for the day, you do whatever it takes, you iron your clothes, you iron your uniform, you do whatever it is, you go to grind it all the way out, you bust your ass all day long, then you get home, and then you got to cook dinner, you got family, you got kids running all over the place, you know, you might be in a little bit of a tiff with the wife or the husband, whatever it is, and, and you're just like in this place where it's just the daily grind of every single day. And this is one of the ways that a lot of people get burnt out pretty quickly because they're looking at it, is this what my life consists of? Do I have any true celebrations? Do I have any moments that I can actually sit back and say, I've earned that, I've done that? You know when we end up doing that is later on in life because we're grinding, we grind, we grind, we grind. And then when our kids are graduating high school or our kids are off to college or they're off to the military and they're doing whatever they're doing and we're looking at them and we say, well, we raised really good kids here, but we did it and never really took steps along the way to be able to, I don't know, adjust or or take inventory or take a look at where we're at because we're just busy grinding. We're busy every single day doing it, grinding it, working it, and just busting our rump getting there. When we're not actually stopping to smell the roses. We're not actually taking these moments during our journeys to be able to say, hey, you know what? Let me stop for a moment here. And if you are... Good for you. You're in the minority. I'm just going to be honest. Because a lot of us grind it out. We work. We work. We work. And it's the right thing to do. And we, 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 we fight like hell to get there. And before you know it, people are saying, wow, time went so fast. How many of you have had conversations with kids, with, uh, with, um, with friends, with family members, with kids that have literally stepped back and said to, the, said to you after you had the conversation around, they grow up so quickly. How many times have you heard somebody say, my kids grew up so quickly, so fast? Do you know why they say that? The seconds go by just the same as any other day. The minutes go by the same exact amount of time. It's 60 seconds. And there's 60 minutes in an hour, and they go by the same. Time is not actually going by fast. It's the fact that you're not stopping in the moment to take the time necessary for you to take in each moment and actually embrace them. Actually take a look at what is actually going on. Take a look at what amazing things are happening all around you. And this is especially evident when we come to kids, right? When you got kids, you know, they're going through the baby phase, then they go through toddler phase, then they go through preteens, then they go through teenagers, then they go through young adults and all that stuff. And I get all that. I get I get that. And it does have that feeling of just flying right by you at lightning speed. But you're the cause of that. We are the cause of that happening. When we feel like things go so quickly for us, we are the ones that are in charge of slowing that down, guys. Nobody else. There's no major Oz behind the curtain kind of guy that's going to slow that time clock down. They're just not. So we are the ones that have to stop in the moment, 
have an attitude of gratitude, and do everything possible to make sure that we are grateful of everything that we have and taking inventory of everything. So here, here's, here's an exercise. Here's something that I know that when I woke up this morning and I thought about it and I said to myself, there are two things that I have to do. Two things that I have to do. One of them is going to be make sure that I continue to journal my tail off. If you don't journal and you don't write down your thoughts and think about the things that you're trying to be able to accomplish and go after the things you're trying to be able to go after and do all those things, but you're journaling along the way to take notes of how these things are going, goods, bads, ups, downs, whatever it is, you're, you're fighting like hell to be able to get to where you have to get to. And you're not taking notes of how you're reacting, how you're responding, how you feel, and those kind of things. You're not setting yourself up for success. Now, listen, I know there's not a lot of people that love to journal. There's not a lot of people that like to write. I get it. I get all that. But at the same token, there could be all kinds of other things that are going on that you should be taking advantage of, right? Literally, if you're, if, you're, if you're not journaling, you could do anything. You could do audio journals. You could do video snippets. You could do audio snippets or something to be able to take down one jot of a move to do something to be able to move things forward, right? Because it's important for you and your own personal growth to make sure you're taking inventory of how it's going. So however you want to be able to do it, it's something you can try to be able to accomplish and try to put on your agenda to get done. And it's something you really should be looking at overall for you to be successful in the direction you want to move in, right? So at the end of the day, that's the first thing. The first thing is journaling and making sure you're taking inventory of everything you're feeling, all the things that are happening, the ups, the downs, the goods, the bads, the overs, the unders, all of it, right? Really leaning in on that piece of it. So the second piece of it is I posted a video this morning and it really hit home for a lot of people. And the reason it hit home was is because I said to them, make sure you thank yourself. Now, what do you mean by this? I remember hearing this thing back in the day, Snoop Dogg, (laughs) Snoop Dogg did an interview and somebody had asked him the question, you know, he was getting an award and he asked, they asked him the question. They said, you know, who, who do you want to thank? Who do you want to be able to make this speech for? Who do you want to whatever? And he said, I want to thank me. I want to thank me for being me. I want to thank for me, for me, for putting in all those hours. I want to thank me for having a dream and a vision to be able to move things forward. I want to thank me for being me and driving me to go the direction I needed to drive in to get to where I have to get to, to be as successful as I am. I want to thank me for being me. Now, some people might look at that and say that's conceited, right? You're conceited. You're, you're stuck on yourself. Literally, seriously, you want to thank you, really? You're not going to thank you know, God. You're not going to thank your family. You're not going to thank all these things. No, what he was trying to say was is that it's, t- it's high time that I look at myself and I say, you're awesome. And you have worked your tail off getting to where you are. So how often have you sat down and taken a look at the inventory, taken a look at everything you're trying to accomplish and everything you're doing? How often have you sat down and actually thanked yourself for the work that you put in? How often have you sat down and said, you know what? I know you put in 12 hours. I know you put in 15 hours. I know you busted your rump there. I know you came home and still opened your arms fully wide for your kids when you got home or the dog or the cat or whatever it is or the wife that wanted to tell you all about her day, whatever it is. And you literally took the time to do whatever you needed to do to be the good dad, good husband, good father, good everything. How often do you thank yourself for that? How often do you compliment yourself for that? So part of the self-care aspect we're talking about here, one is to journal, writing things down, thinking about how that, how your, how the actions all impact everything that's going on, right? How are you truly being kind to yourself, taking inventory? The journaling aspect of it, I feel, is one of the most important aspects. But if you're not a journaler, that's okay. I get it. Just like I said, inventory of somehow. And then the second part of it is self-care of actually taking a look at the things you're doing and being proud of the things that you've done. How often do we sit down and take a look at our the work that we've done or the things that we've done and the first words out of our mouth is, yeah, but. Yeah, but I could have done it this way. Yeah, I, I got that promotion, but I could have been there faster. Yeah, but, you know, I could have gone to college. Yeah, I went to college and I got my degree. Yeah, but it, it, I'm in, I'm in uh, over my head in debt. Whatever it is, we always end it with a yeah, but. We're never really just leaning in on the fact that I'm damn proud of what I've done. I'm focused. I'm, I'm, I'm driven. 
I'm, I'm, a, I'm an example setter. I'm a great example for my kids. I'm an example for my family. I'm an example for somebody that's going to be able to set the trend and keep things moving forward. I'm an advocate. Whatever it is that you're trying to be able to go for, why don't we compliment ourselves a little bit more? Why can't we lean in on the fact that you should be in a place where you can compliment yourself and do things the right way? And keep things moving forward in a way that you feel good about what you're doing rather than belittling the things that you're doing. We, we've talked about it on this podcast a thousand times. How many times did you get done working out or you're getting done and you didn't lift the weights you wanted so you belittle it? Or you've lost 100 pounds but you still got another 50 more to go so you belittle the 100 and you say, oh, I still got 150 more to go so I'm not there yet. No, why, where's, why are you yeah button all the time? Really, at the end of the day, you should be saying to yourself, damn, I lost 100 pounds. That's a, that's a lot of weight. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of things that I put into play here. Yeah, okay, I got 50 more to go. It doesn't matter. Right now, I'm playing right here. And whatever's worked for me over the last 100 pounds, I need to keep moving forward and be celebrating in, in, in some of the things that I'm accomplishing, the things that I'm doing. Just like you would at your job, right? Like literally, you're always trying to be able to move up in the company or you're trying to be able to show people what you can do. However it is, whatever it is you're, you're doing in your job, you're trying to be able to impress others to be able to say, hey, look at me, here I am, right? So you're trying to impress people. You put together resumes. You put together all kinds of great stuff together, right? You do it all over the place. You're trying to be able to sell your product or yourself or your services to somebody else. So you make yourself look really good and you're trying to be able to sell it. Well, why can't you do that to yourself? You might do it for somebody else that's looking at your resume or looking at trying to be able to pick one of 50 people for a promotion or to not downsize or whatever it is, the situation you got going on at work. So you sell yourself big time, right? Here's what I've done. I've done this. I've done that. I've, I've, I've achieved this and I've achieved that. And I've led this much amount of people and I've had this much experience and this, whatever. And I've got this resume that's listed up with like 15 or 16 different bullet points of all the little things that I've done. How come you don't do that with your everyday life for yourself? We'll do it for jobs. We'll do it for occupations, but we won't do it for our own lives. You, you, you can't sit down and compliment yourself and say, I'm proud of this, that, and the other, and then thank yourself for doing those things. We don't do it enough. We don't thank ourselves because we feel it feels conceited. We also feel like the job's not done yet. I know so many people that I've had conversations with before that I've sat down with them and said, hey, listen, you know, how are you feeling about that? And they say, oh, the job's not done yet. I like I still got more to go. And I'm like, wait a minute. You've already done three quarters of the job that you need to get there. I understand you got more to go, but damn it. Celebrating that. Look at your whole entire experience and think to yourself, man, I am damn proud of the things that I've done. I've gone above and beyond. I've worked extra hours. I've, I've, I've dug in when, when times needed to get dug into. I've taken the time necessary for me to be successful. And everything I've done moving forward, I've done it with a smile on and everything else. And I'm a champion. Now that comes, I know, of course, in that whole conversation, we're talking about professional, right? Your professional life. You're trying to work, work up in the company. You're trying to do whatever. You try to sell yourself. You should do the same exact thing for yourself. But what about in the family life? Here's the thing you should do. Think about this, okay? Here's what I really want you to do. If you're talking about kids, you're talking about maybe your kids are graduated, maybe they're all adults, maybe they're all moving out, or maybe you've got toddlers and little kids in the house or whatever it is, and every one of your kids at one point or another outside of some of those really formidable tough years that, that, that you know mom and dad are always wrong, really, really look at yourself the way your children look at you, the true way they look at you. You're a provider. You're a great mom or dad. You give good advice. You hold them accountable. You get them to where they need to be. You keep them healthy. You keep them fed. You keep them warm. You do everything you can. You'll give your shirt off your back for your kids. You'll do whatever it takes, and those kids know this. Every one of the kids know this, even if they don't express it, even if they don't talk about it, even if they don't bring it up in any kind of conversation or whatever, they know this, they see it, they see what you do every single day. They know how much you work. They know how much you grind. And later on in years, when they get to be 18, 19, 20 and older, they're going to look back on it and say, man, I had great parents. My parents would have given me anything. 
They took care of me. They did everything they could to be able to do it. Now, my point of that is the way your kids look at you should be the same way that you look at you. Just like the resume does for the job, and you're trying to sell yourself to an employer or somebody that's making decisions on your employment or or promotions or whatever, this is a family one. This is a family one. You're a good dad or mom. You work hard. You bust your tail. You provide. You do everything. You give advice. You give hugs. You give kisses. You give love and uh, and an outstandingly huge amount of love to your family members, right? Stuff that sometimes goes under underappreciated, I'm sure. It feels that way sometimes. But just know, the way your kids look at you and the way that you raise your kids, if it's done right, should be the same way that you look at yourself. We should be giving ourselves some grace. We should be giving ourselves some kudos some positivity, some real true momentum on truly being the people that we're meant to be. Does that make sense? Because it makes sense to me when I think about the fact of I don't compliment myself enough. I don't. I'm always swinging from the fences of going, oh, you know what? I I got more to go or I got more things to do. And it's especially hard, to be honest with you. Here's my therapy session from you guys, from me to you guys. It's especially hard right now knowing that I lost my job and a couple of the applications or a couple of the interviews that I've done, I'm overqualified. I'm overqualified for. Or I, I, a um, couple of the phone interviews or even some of the applications that I've had, you're overqualified. You're, you're, you're well beyond it. No, they just don't want to pay any money for a person that has actually busted their rump trying to get their degrees and do the things they are. But that's okay. That's I digress, right? But again, I start to sell myself short because then I start saying to myself, well, why did I actually go for that degree? Why did I go for those things? What, what's the reason that I uh, you know, put myself in debt for it or whatever? And I start asking questions about the things that I'm most proud of. Instead of leaning in on the fact that you should be super proud of the fact that you actually did it. As a full-time dad, as a full-time husband, as a full-time employee, you went through and did your bachelor's and your master's degree, working hard at nighttime, doing all your assignments, all your capstones, all your stuff that you had to do. You busted your ass doing everything you had to do. You should be damn proud of the work that you put into it. Right? But how often do we sell ourselves short? We do it all the time. And that's the unfortunate part of it. The unfortunate part is we sell ourselves short all the time just based on the fact that we're not taking inventory. We're not really truly leaning in on the fact that we should be proud of the things that we're doing and being thankful for the things that we're doing and all those things because it's just not right to do. We think to ourselves, society tells us that you should just continue to grind and be the best version of yourself. And we always think the best version of ourselves is in the future, but why can't the best version of ourselves be right now? What's the reason we're always trying to strive for more, 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 more down the road when right now, in this moment, at this time, when we're just chilling here, we can't look at ourselves and say, I'm super proud of where I'm at right now. My best version of me is right now. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. It doesn't have to be the next step. It doesn't have to be the next success. It can be right here, right now, or even still, even more than that, taking a look at maybe some of the things that we've done in the past. So most of the time we always reflect on the things that we've done in the past and we're not that proud of, right? We've all done that. We've all looked at things that we've done, the way we've raised our kids or the way that we've looked at political views or done different things and we're not that proud of things that we've done in the past or whatever else. And we're always looking at it in a negative light when we could be looking at it in a positive light to say all those things that I did that were positive – You know, with my parenting skills and the things that I've done and the learning phases that I went through. And yeah, there were some bumps in the road, but that's okay. I learned from them and I moved on and whatever else. I should be super proud of those things. Yes, I should be. Am I? I don't know. Sometimes it's hard. Because we live in this society. We live in a world where you berate the things that you're doing. You belittle the way you look and feel. And then you strive for better. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. It's 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 awful. It's an awful cycle that you're a part of. I'm a part of, 
and we go through this whole entire situation where we start to berate ourselves and we start to belittle ourselves and we start to sell ourselves short and then when we're always trying to strive to be better, then that better section that we're trying to be able to strive for and whatever state that we're in right now or in the future is less than what extraordinary really looks like because we're so used to failure, right? And here's the thing. It's time that we start to focus all those things and redefine what success looks like for us. Take a look if you need to, seriously. Take a look at where you're at. If the best version of you is not where you're at right now, maybe redefining that and seeing what that version looks like in the future or right now should be. Because if you're not striving for it or at least driving towards that that euphoric state of feeling like you've accomplished something or that you're driving towards certain things, if you're not at least trying, then what's it worth living? What's it worth trying to be able to push forward with? Now, I just said the what I just said what's it worth living? At the end of the day, our lives are chapters, right? We all know that. Many chapters of our books. Chapter one through whatever it is, across the board. And you need to look at those chapters and think to yourself, am I proud of those chapters? Are those chapters done with smiles? Even the ones that are dark, even the ones that I fell, I skinned my knee, and I did not do very well in those situations, even the ones I'm not most proud of. But have you learned from it? Have you moved on and, and said, you know what? I've learned from my mistakes in the past, whether it's relationships or anything that we're talking about. I put a smile on my face in that chapter because I know that I've learned something and I've grown from it. And it's been a growth strategy with it and I love it. See, the way I believe is, is that we don't thank ourselves enough for the things that we are doing every single day. You're a hard worker, just like me. Everybody in this room. Everybody on these headphones are hardworking people. They bust their rumps every single day. They go through and they try to be able to get everything done that they have to get done. And they really, truly know that it's the right thing to do. But they don't often really take a look and thank, it, and thank themselves. I can almost – here's, here's another exercise you could try to do. Here's one thing you could try to do <laughs> just to be able to prove my point. When you're sitting with your family and you guys are having dinner and you're doing whatever it takes to be able to do all the things you want to do, right? You're having dinner together. You're having a conversation. You're talking to your kids. You're talking to your wife. You're talking to your family. Ask your family, what are you proud of me for? That's what you really should do. What are you thankful for with me? And really take a look at to see if what they see is in alignment with what you see. Then you really can get a good snapshot of exactly of exactly where you stand, right? You can really get a good look at who you are as a person, how you feel about yourself, and what kind of things you need to work on to be able to make sure that you right size what you really see and what they see. It's just like when I talked about before when I do those avatars and I draw avatars for people and I ask them the question, I hope that you see yourself the same way that I see you. When I draw you, I hope that you are looking at that photo and you're not responding with, oh my goodness, I look so different than I normally look. I look younger. I look hotter. I look sexy. I look handsome. Instead, you're saying, oh man, that's spot on. That's spot on. That's so exactly the way I look. We don't. We look at ourselves so much different than those around us and the pe- than people are looking at us. So that's where we got to work on. Self-care matters. What you're digging in on yourself matters. Start to do these little things you can do, taking inventory, start journaling, start thinking about the things you're doing and really, truly be successful, thanking yourself and celebrating in some of the great things that you're doing every single day that you're doing it. You're worth that investment. You're worth the investment to sit back and say to yourself, I'm proud of myself. I'm literally looking at where I'm at right now. I'm proud of what I've done, even if I'm halfway through it. All right, you know what? I've worked so hard to get to where I'm at right now, and I've just got a little ways to go. However it is that you want to be able to right-size it and spin it, you're worth that investment. You're worth the investment of taking that inventory, really, truly looking at where you sit, and write all of this down. Take inventory of how you feel and where you're at and what you're most proud of. Because you know what you can also do just to, just to button this whole thing up? 
You can also take some of those things that you're super proud of yourself that you've written down now. You've taken inventory of the things you're most proud of. You can now use those to your advantage moving forward. If you're a good communicator and you're really proud of your communication skills, great. There's something you can do moving forward. If you're a good parent, great. You can help others. You can do whatever you can do to be able to continue to move forward and be an amazing parent. Whatever it is that your skill set is, now you're redefining this and now you're really starting to right-size things to use in the future to be the best version of yourself. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk soon. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Please do us a favor and leave feedback and a five-star rating on whatever platform that you use.